anyone in close proximity has the same dream. What is it? A secret that can no longer be kept. It started a month ago. What started? A change in the earth and the sky. His power. There's a weird locking mechanism. Looks like it can only be opened from the inside. A life form is growing out of prebiotic fluid. It's not winding down into disorder. It's self-organizing. It's becoming something. What? Welcome to Movie Humpers. It's Halloween Humpfest. I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. And this it's Halloween. Ha- it's, it's well, we're in the month of October. Every weekday, every day in Halloween. Every weekday, we do a drop on your holes. Yeah, every day in October is Halloween. We just wrapped up Larry Cohen's "It's Alive" trilogy. Uh, every Monday is a Hammer Horror, Christopher Lee Dracula classic, and every Friday is a bit more random. Yes. And we're talking about this movie. Prince of, Prince of Darkness. And our next Hammer Horror is called Dracula Prince of Darkness. Not to be confused. So it'll it'll be a little confusing, but don't be so confused. I thought, straight up, at least a now solid 20 me. minutes into this movie, that this was going to be a Dracula you, movie. You, you were expecting Christopher Lee to just walk I in. didn't expect Christopher Lee. Maybe a Peter Cushing. I just thought this was going to be John Carpenter's version of Dracula. I'd pay to see that. So would I. Yeah. But that's what I thought. Because I didn't know this movie. I'd never seen it. I... John Carpenter... Had no idea. Probably my personal favorite horror director. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a he's got a fan base. He grew up not far from here from where we're at recording in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's just like maybe an hour and a half, two hours north, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, he went to Western Kentucky University. Uh, you were telling me that... He used the Bowling Green Bowling Green Orchestra for for to credit his music That's so crazy. in the in a, a, a few of his movies early on. In Halloween, it's credited as the Bowling Green Orchestra. That's it, hilarious. His music is like one of the best things about his. Music. I've I'm a big fan of him as a musician as well. He's apparently a big gamer too. Like he likes oh, to yeah. play video games. He's a he's an older man, but he's yeah, like yeah. playing like Mass Effect and shit. That's awesome. Um, I don't know what that this is. This movie is credited. <laughs> it's a game. Uh, it, this movie is credited is written by Martin Quartermass. That is John Carpenter. It's hilarious. And this also, mo- where does that name come from? <laughs> Martin Quartermass. I don't know. I feel he, like it's a joke that only he's he just, knows. He's just, yeah, it's probably some inside joke. This stars Donald Pleasance, who you might recall from all from a lot of the Halloween movies as Doctor Loomis. Yes. Uh, no, he's. Father Loomis. No, in the Halloween movies, he's Doctor Loomis. Doctor Loomis in, in pr- this movie, Prince of Darkness. He's Father Loomis. Father Loomis. So they're twin brothers. And let me tell you, these Amazing. these brothers have seen some shit. You know, I was posited that I want a, I wanted a like a RPG video game where you play in Cronenberg's world. Ooh. Honestly, you can combine several directors: Carpenter, Cronenberg. John Waters. Maybe your character goes to Baltimore. I don't oh know. Oh, my God. Yes. Anyway, this is like a dream project. It would be. That if I started GoFundMe, I would just rip and be ripping you all off because I can't make video. <laughs> but, all, yes, Donald Pleasance and Victor Wong, Lisa Blunt. I noticed that um, I forgot the – oh, Alice Cooper is in this movie. Alice Cooper. We love Alice Cooper. Oh, yeah. I noticed that the main – He's not really the main character. I would consider Donald Pleasance and Victor Wong to be like kind of the real protagonists of the movie. Yes, they. I think they consider the guy and the girl to be because they're like the love story. Well, Lisa Blunt is great. She is great. But the guy that's supposed to she's supposed to be the love interest for, and this is kind of an issue with a certain Halloween three had this helmet, and mm-hmm. John Carpenter didn't technically make Halloween three, but 
he produces it's those. He makes them. He's, it's in his world. And remember the protagonists in Halloween three. That guy looked like a guy who was 15 years older than the guy I'm talking about mm-hmm. with the mustache and Prince of Darkness. Mm-hmm. And the thing that a, a, a fair criticism for both of these movies in particular is that that protagonist seems very disposable. Yes. Compared to everyone around him. So somehow this ancient thing ends up in a basement in Los Angeles, I suppose. Yeah. And, and it is ancient. Something's been happening. In the city. Things are changing. Happening <laughs> People um, are being drawn is. to this old decrepit church. These are, We yeah. open up on this priest who has passed away and he has this little box with a key in it. And this nun finds him dead and immediately goes and gets Father Loomis. Father Loomis goes to the church. He opens the door with the key and he finds this green cylinder. He says that, that the priest prior to him... Stayed in that building 100% of the time. He would leave one time a week to go get food. And every day he would open the door to go look at the thing. I guess just to see if anything was happening. Where do you think he'd go? Halal guys or something? I bet you he's just going to the corner market. He's got to get back as soon as possible, Bobby. He's watching the Prince of Darkness in a cylinder. Mm, Right. He's watching a test tube of evil. Yeah. He's got to get back. (laughs) But also, there are literally one million candles burning. In this place. Yeah. How? I love the ambiance of it, but that's where my brain goes is. So you're going to burn this place down. How do keep candles going? <laughs> but anyway, that was beside the point. So then Dr. Loomis is like, I got to figure this out. And so he goes to his, I'm assuming that he knows yeah, he's, Victor Wong. Victor Wong. He's a, a professor and a scientist. He's a scientist. So the, so the, I love this, this like meeting of religion and science. To where Dr. Loomis is like, we've been hanging on to this thing for so long, but now something's happening and we need science to help us figure it the fuck out. So Victor Wong then brings about all of these various PhD students mm-hmm. of certain fields. In different departments, other teachers. Biologists, like uh, ancient language specialists. And, you know, it's a lot of like sci-fi horror movie science involved here. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so they, they're they carbon testing parts of it. And they're like, this shit's like 7 million years old. And they're like, oh, that's impossible. And, it's, and she's like, well, it is. And uh, the, the girl who, uh, total hottie, is translating the ancient language. And she's giving these new texts that are similar to the fall of Lucifer. But, like, they're different. Mm-hmm. Like, this movie is kind of positing a whole new chapter of, like, long lost demonology. Like, like an apocrypha that we've yet to find. Yes. yes. Which is really kind of cool. So... You know something's court like it's almost like like it references like Satan's dad or something. Yeah, and- it 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 sort of posits that this prince, this son, needs to rise up, which is also very Jesusy, right? Like needs to come into this world so that he can bring his father. Yeah. Now whether that's actually Satan as we know Satan or something else, I don't know. But this is a prince of darkness going to bring his father into. The world, we do not know how yet. They also posit, and this I, this also I want to know more about. Like, I truly, I wish that John Carpenter just, like, wrote this story and we could just read it. Like, the, the yeah. what the text was supposed to be. Because they go off on this thread at one point that I couldn't completely follow. But they basically were saying that, like, Jesus knew about this evil on Earth and tried to warn, warn people. This universal mind resides in the mirror image instead of in our universe as we wanted to believe. Maybe he's anti-God, bringing darkness instead of light. Why weren't we told the truth? (laughs) Without the technology to confirm, it would have been another legend. But he was our prisoner, not yours! Basically, Donald Pleasant has this whole situation where he feels really guilty that like the church like squashed this thing and he's basically one, one of many things the church should feel guilty about absolutely but he basically says we told everybody that evil came from them but evil doesn't come from them evil comes from this or something yeah, like he yeah. basically was like we lied to the whole world yeah and the he, catholic church is responsible for this like hiding this thing that now no one's gonna believe so i need the scientists to show that this is a real thing so people will listen to us. And it's like the most insane, wonderful story ever. Oh. It's uh, so good. It's it's like, 
the the idea of that the grand ancient evil in Christian mythology mythology uh <laughs> i mean <laughs> is like actually completely different than what we know about and the way evil yeah. is formed and it's i i just i think that's there's just something kind of cool and creative about that for sure so this thing it's just in the in kind of the cathedral area and they've got it set up and they're studying it down and, like under and no one knows and everyone's like very confused as to what's going on no one's really telling them anything mm-hmm. and what can you even really explain here until mm-hmm. the girl starts translating no one's really got any idea what they're looking at but they're they're weirded out for multiple reasons okay so they've been told they've been brought to this place to stay the whole weekend to to study this thing and they're not given any information they're basically locked in this old creepy church and there's all these homeless people that are acting like zombies, like surrounding the building. There's all these weird like bugs and, and Alice worms Cooper. and Alice, Alice Cooper. Cooper's in that posse. You know, halfway through the movie, he disappeared. So he must have been making a record after he got a kill. Yeah, he got his kill in. So one of the one of the scientists, the PhD students, like the thing is like. Remember a nightmare on Elm Street where mm. like the bed and the I thought obvi- of that too. Obviously it, shit was filmed upside down but, but it's twisted, so good. but it looks it's really such cool. Easy way to make something look amazing. So it's the, the, the green goo is like dripping like up and it's like enveloping. And somehow the no one has noticed. Well, it just kind of started and everyone's just kinda like looking at this thing, but no one knows what to do about it. Yeah, so this girl goes down there alone. And it pisses on her. This movie is all has piss play references all in it. Like it looks like it, it, does. it pissed right in her her mouth and face. It is a it is like a stream directly into her mouth. And she has now become possessed by the darkness. Yes. And so she's going through and one by one they infect each other. And, and I heard, she can piss from her mouth into other people's mouths. Yeah. And apparently I've heard there's interpretations of cuz it's the 80, 80s AIDS epidemic and mm. stuff like that the I think the the character Walter, who gets trapped in the closet, is that his name? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, he's gay. Yeah, he's it, a gay character. It kind of seems like he is for he, sure. He, they say he is. Oh, he is. He's he talks about how he's going to have a dinner date with this like handsome accountant student, and that he's is, a dude. They make they make there quite are a head at least for a casual horror movie. Yeah, there are at least two clear references to him being gay. One when he says he's going out with this like very attractive I think accountant student, but then the guy makes a joke about it being a dude and he's like not a joke, but he like says it's a dude mm. and then he just is like yeah, I know. Like I can't like I can't believe I got him or whatever like <laughs> yeah. and then there's some other later he makes another comment about it but and also he was trapped in the closet even though he wasn't he was in the closet. He was trapped in the closet. <laughs> oh my god. But yes, yeah, so there and there's yeah. all and there's this one dude that you feel I I feel I forget what his name was. He was the tall black guy. But oh. you felt so bad for him because he gets infected. But you can tell it's he he the way he acts it's like so his good. mind is still partially there. So he's just like emotionally being like suffering like hell. Light me. But now I'm <laughs> oh, no, no. He's also died. And come back to life. Yeah, he slits his own throat. And he sees himself in a mirror. His performance. And like, he was amazing. Was so actually he, great. He slit his own throat. And in that moment, like then based on what happens later, I do think that he was killing himself because he knew he was being controlled. Right? Like it kind of seems like he's looking at them to scare them or something. But maybe he really did be like, I got to kill myself before I hurt people. But then later he's like a zombie dude. But he goes into this room where there's this big mirror. Yeah. And he just like walks up to this mirror and is crying, looking at himself. Like he knows something is wrong, but he doesn't know what to do. And it yeah. broke my fucking heart. Because the heart. other people, when the other lady and the uh, the girl who was uh, interpreting the languages, it seemed like when they got infected, that their whole being was just went over. They were also but this closer guy, to the thing itself. Yeah, but this guy just seemed like he was just like being tortured inside mm-hmm. his own mind. Mm-hmm. And so one guy like, Everyone knows something weird is going on. One guy, like, just takes off, and he ends up getting killed by Alice Cooper and the homeless guys. Mm-hmm. And you see that guy, like, 
like hollering for them from the outside. And, and his voice sounds crazy. And their voices are different after they've been yeah. infected. I've got a message for you, and you're not going to like it. Look at his chest. <laughs> Ready for death. <laughs> yeah. And then you close in on him and he's covered yes. in bugs and he turns in a and his head fell off and shit and he like and then fell his apart. Were, like going down into the ground. It was so good. So in that part, it's like full on like, oh shit, we're fucked. I, I don't I don't even think they figure out that it's the mirror. Well, before we get there, yeah. This one girl has bumped her arm at some point. Uh, and she thinks she just has a bruise. She keeps saying, oh, my arm hurts to have a bruise. Well, the girl who's like our lead girl, th- this redhead, what she's doing this whole time is inputting calculations. Because they're basically saying that the math that was in this book was like so far advanced that like they barely understand it now. Like they can't understand this math. Yeah. And so she's been doing these equations and sort of like questioning everything, just like worried the whole time. Right? But she notices. What? Hell math. Okay, hell math. She notices on the girl's arm that a there's symbol. like a symbol. She doesn't put it together right away. But in the text that the other girl had been encrypting or decrypting, translating, yeah, sure. um, she had said that the, the, the someone would be chosen. Right. So the girl having this thing on her arm meant that she was the chosen one. So then she goes to fall asleep and the a couple of the zombie people, the translator girl and the first girl, wheel the green cylinder into the like nap room that they had set up. This is when the boy gets stuck in the closet. Those girls are right outside being zombies. And this other girl who I love this character. Other thing about this movie, everyone was just people. Yeah. There was no one that was like remarkably gorgeous or like obviously going to be the one that was going to be chosen. No no one's even overtly charming. People are just annoying and getting on each other. They really are. There was, one there was like one doctor who kept fucking whistling and i wanted to punch him yeah, like yeah. there's stuff like that or sing he was also, doing a trumpet. also when they're resting they're getting they're all having the same dream yeah. where and then the dream you hear a voice like a distorted voice that is like this is not a dream we are transmitting this directly to you from the year and it's given like half the year we know it's 19 something we don't know mm-hmm. what the year is and then they keep waking up from the dream and they're talking about the dream but they're not like heeding what the dream saying to them yeah. that it's being broadcast from over time and like yeah. it's coming from somewhere and in the dream you see like a silhouette of darkness like coming through a doorway it looks really fucking cool and creepy yeah in fact the image is right above you here on Ooh. our uh it's video so good. and it, so good. it looks so cool so shit's hitting the fan yeah and they do talk about that and again there's some more like movie science talking about how maybe from the future they could send back like something that moves faster than the speed of light and like just what's happening is they're aiming it at the church in the future mm. because they don't they can't aim it at like a person or put it on like a tv but they're just like aiming it to try to like get into these people's subconscious anyone who comes near this place basically so this girl, it starts going into her. And so it's done the thing again where the water's risen to the ceiling. And, and then it, it just like goes through her into eyes, her and, eyes mouth. and nose and mouth. And it all goes into her so much that like I was confused for a second and thought she was pregnant. Prince of Darkness is a piss pig. It just filled her belly up with so much water that she looked pregnant for yeah, a second. Yeah. I thought it was going to have her have a baby that was yeah, going to yeah. immediately grow into a person. Yeah, I thought that too. Which would have also been great. But it didn't. It like eventually like absorbed into her body. And we're getting this whole story from this little guy stuck in the closet because he's yelling through the wall at the rest yeah, of them. Yeah, they've barricaded themselves. They know that they're possessed and they're barricaded. And they're trying to like... And Walter's stuck in the closet. Get a hole through the wall to get Walter out of the closet to where they are. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of telling them what's happening. Meanwhile, you know. Donald Pleasance is trapped in the room with the mirror hiding while the dude who's like tortured in his mind is kind of... Just guarding the room. Yeah, and Donald Pleasance is just like praying, and he's basically like, Jesus, where the fuck are you? Mm. Is what he's saying. He's yeah. like, how is this happening? What's happening? Also, so, yeah. the, the, the the street people are like in the part of the building just waiting for them to jump out of the window because they're trapped in this area. Oh, yeah, and Mustache, and for they, some dumbass reason, does. And if they come out, they start to converge on him. So they're kind of all trapped. Yeah. Um, in this, like, part of the church. They cannot leave. And and people are just dying or being turned into zombies, like, left and right. And if they're dead, then they reanimate. And this girl just turns into, like, it looks like her skin is melting off of her body. Like, she's got boils and sores and things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like she had one of those like chemical burn peels all over her body and yeah her, she looks like freddy krueger mm-hmm. essentially and then Ugh. they finally get up and she's done gestating the piss in her body i guess but she just looks like a yeah. pus filled monster and so they're going to they With know still blonde hair i wanted know, her to rip her hair they know off. walter his name is walter right i don't know i can't remember uh but they go to attack him in the closet he's been stuck there while they're trying to break through the wall and the they other finally side. get him out of the and they take down the barricade to kind of distract the scenario meanwhile um, which was i think dumb because they took down their barricade <laughs> Meanwhile, I think it's the girl with the symbol. Everyone's going all over the place because everyone's trapped and like trying to help each other out, but then having to avoid Mm -hmm. scenario. And the girl with the symbol, she reaches into the mirror. Well, she tries with a compact. Yeah. And she can only get two fingers. Yeah. (laughs) I felt weird even saying that, but she can only get two fingers in. And she was like, this isn't good enough. This movie knows what it's doing. (laughs) So she went into the room where she could. She starts and she her sticks her hand, hand in the fingers, and once the building is, you know, been haunted, I guess, then you can start to pull into the other realm of hell through the mirrors. So we see her hand go through, and, and we see this this huge, hand. like clawed beast hand, and they're just like grabs the touching. hand, and she starts to pull it out, and Donald Pleasance is like, "Oh fucking shit!" They cut her. He cuts her arm off. Yeah, he cuts her arm off. And then it, she immediately grows it back, like, yeah. and then goes to reach out and pull him in again. And then the red haired girl sees it happening and just shoves, just bodies the girl and the, the, the Prince of Darkness into the mirror. And herself. And herself. And Donald Pleasance takes the axe that he finds and he shatters the mirror, trapping the redhead in there. And we mm-hmm. see an awesome image of her, like, Going, putting her hand out to she where she drowning. came in, and she's like terrified. And but it, she really actually sacrificed herself to save everyone else mm-hmm. and all the 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 homeless people. Ru- they just walk away. They just walk away. It's just over, and everything is saved. And do with mustache is like so, so sad. But I don't remember if it's Donald Pleasance or Wong who says to him. You know, she she sacrificed her life to save the Just world. Just like Jesus, she is to Jesus. And then we see the we see the transmission again from their dreams, and it's the full transmission, it's and it says fu- it's nineteen ninety nine. And we see the figure come out, and it's her. So it implies that in this movie came out in eighty seven, in ninety nine she will come back. She will come out of hell, and and unfortunately they did not make a sequel. In 1999, to a Prince which they of had, because like, how did that happen? Like, what happened? Is she now the Prince of Darkness? Is she? For all the for all the eye rolling dialogue and the there like, was a lot the pointless protagonists. Mm-hmm. Well, at least only one of them I really didn't like the dude with the stash. But guy in the closet said a lot of shit that I was like, "Why are you talking?" But the but the imagery and the way it was shot and mm-hmm. and the the creepy shit and the. The, the transmission and that silhouette, genuinely creepy and awesome. Mm-hmm. And the lore around it, like mm-hmm. twisting what we know and being like, oh, it's actually like darker and more evil than so we good. even knew. Yeah. And then we're seeing, and then the concept at the end of like that, the figure we've been seeing that whole time in the dream transmission is the girl who sacrificed herself to save everyone. So it's like, is she the princess of darkness now? Is she full evil now? And it's just, it just wraps in. There's just so much left on the table with this movie. It really kind of effortlessly built this lore in this world. I love this movie. I do too. I really love this movie. Yeah. And for all its flaws, it has everything that makes John Carpenter so good at what he does at yeah. the same time. Yeah. So we're going to hump this movie. You can have it one through five. I'll give it one through five. Yeah. Combined for best out of ten for John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. What do you give it? A 3.75. I'm going to go four. I'm okay. going to go four. Okay. So, yeah. Prince of Darkness, combine our core. It's our, our score. 7.75. Hell yeah. That is the bottom of the A tiers. We'll put it over Silver Linings Playbook. Okay, yeah. I think Silver Linings Playbook is actually a really good, well-written movie. It is, it is. But I feel like Prince of Darkness is one that's going to stay with me in a way that is different. Yes. 
Now, if you look at scores online for this movie, it hits around the sixes. Carpenter heads are probably nodding at us approvingly. Anyone else who isn't, who has maybe passively seen this movie, or maybe like you really thought it was that good? Well, then I don't think you're really like a horror fan or a John Carpenter fan, if that's your response. And I'm a movie in general fan. I don't consider yeah. myself one of these hardcore horror guys, but this is this movie is good. Yeah. This movie is very good. I think that some people have a hard time looking past when something was made and potentially like the limitations that they had or didn't have. And one thing that I feel like we both really appreciate is what people are able to do with what they had at the time that they made that film. I, I, I think that is well said. And I think it's something that is, you know, anyone can casually critique a movie. Everyone can like what they like. They can, mm-hmm. something that I hate, they can love, you know, Absolutely. it's okay. But when you're talking about older movies, you really need to hold into context the history of the movies. Because if you really, I don't mean to gatekeep, you know, people criticizing movies here. Sure. But I, if you're like one of these people that can't understand something made at another time and can't contextualize the techniques that were made and separate them from modern times mm-hmm. or how they work today or see, and it's not even that all the effects back then, even though they're not as good as what you see today, are always good. There's good movies and bad Absolutely. movies throughout time. But I think you have to have an intellectual curiosity Mm -hmm. about the contextual history of filmmaking Mm -hmm. for me to really even begin to listen to what you got to say about movies. Yeah. And I think there's also kind of a barrier, not just with special effects, but with black and white film and especially with silent film. Mm -hmm. People don't want to watch them. One of my favorite movies ever is a black and white silent film. I kind of, with silent film, I do kind of get why people aren't as drawn to it. We can go into it when we choose to, but I do kind of give, I kind of give it to people if they're like, you know, I just can't do a silent movie. I do get that, but I, but I think there's a difference between saying like, oh, who cares? Yeah. People couldn't talk in movies back then. It's not worth watching. Or, I mean, it's okay if you don't like it. But the, but, but you have to still understand but, that, like, but it doesn't mean there aren't like cool, like, costumes and this sets. That's what I'm They were doing, some people did amazing things with r- what they r- had. Real drama. Yes. So, yeah, that's all we're saying. But Prince of Darkness, we like it. Yeah. It's Halloween Hump Fest. Check yeah. the uh, our show notes for links and other places to find us, podcast versions of this. If you, if you're a, car, are you a carpenter head? Are you not a carpenter head? Did you like this? Did you not Get like this? It. Subscribe, like, comment. Do you like tell Alice it. Cooper? Yeah, tell us. Rate your uh, all of the seventies Alice Cooper records. Do your do your one through whatever. Tell us what your favorite ones are. <laughs> like and subscribe, and death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. Mm-hmm.